What's up guys, in this video we'll see how you can write a client for Gotify in Python which can inform you about the events. So our client will listen for live events which are being transmitted by our Gotify server and uh, it will then notify us if we get any event. Now you might be thinking what is Gotify? So let's break down things for us, for you. It's a simple server for sending and receiving messages in real time per web socket and it's a self-host solution so actually I hosted it at uh, gotify.devcorn.com and uh, their documentation for hosting is really cool they have a dockerized solution which you can run and then you can they also have documentation about setting up nginx reverse proxy so which is actually nice because they're providing it on their documentation so you can just yank it and create the SSL certificates and you're good to go. All right, so let me show you how does Gotify work. So for example, this is the, um, this is my Gotify server and let me show you what happens. If I try to send a event, right? So if I'm going to send an event, so you can actually send notification using something called a client token. So if you go to the, if you go to the clients here, so there is, there are two clients and this token that you can see so this is the token so using this token I can actually send messages and another another thing is if you go to the devices right so this is section is the applications okay so this is the application and this is the token that you can see here right so essentially what's happening here uh, I can actually send message using this token and this URL Again, uh, I have set up the Nginx reverse proxy so I can directly use something like HTTPS, um, gotify.divcon.com and now if I hit enter, you can see uh, I have received a sound and a notification also. So this notification is actually because I have enabled the notification for the Gotify app and in the same way, I can also send uh, these events from anywhere, okay? I can actually use GitHub Actions or GitHub um, uh, I actually forgot the name. What do we call uh, reverse API? Webhooks, right? So we can also use them in webhooks. We can use it uh, in your applications. So basically anywhere, okay? Which can uh, basically send HTTP request. All right, so we are going to write a client, right? So let's just start. What I'm going to do is just make it full screen and increase the font size we're going to go to youtube do we have youtube directory okay i'm going to create a directory called gotify i'm going to go to gotify if you want a video on how to set up gotify on a vps just let me know i will make a video on it so we're going to call it uh, we're going to call it uh, let's say client and uh, so what I'm going to do, let's open the team accession here so that I can have multiple windows simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is like open up here a split window. Yep. All right. So have you ever wondered about the software stack? Oh, I accidentally opened my music player. Anyway, so let's make it client.py. So if you are familiar with WebSockets uh, or if you're watching my videos, then you might know uh, that you might be familiar with a library called WebSockets. So I'm going to use that library. So I'm going to define, define here the shebang operator. So it's user bin Python 3. And uh, yeah, so it is going to be WebSockets. So I'm going to import, first of all, async IO, and then I'm going to import WebSockets. So WebSockets. All right, so let's define a function or this is basically going to be the client function. So client, now it doesn't take anything. Here I'm going to specify that URI or URL, whatever you want to say. So if I just look for CURL, you will see this is the URL, right? I'm just going to copy it, uh, but you know the issue with Tmux, it's hard to copy. I'm just going to do it here okay once I copied the URL so what I can do here is come back to this location and paste it now we just need to send a uh, 
we are just going to listen for the WebSocket events, right? So, oh, I actually put it put the wrong URL. This is for sending the message, right? But we want to listen for events. So for that, if you go to the if you go to the documentation of Gortify, if I go to the API doc section here, you will see one thing which is which is this URL here, which is called stream. Where is stream? Yeah, this is the one. So it is a WebSocket endpoint which we are going to use to listen for the events. So yeah, what we are going to do is uh, here you need to specify your URL, so which is Gotify and uh, dot dipcorn dot com, and uh, I forgot the slash slash here, and then we're going to have slash stream, and then question mark here. You need to provide here you need to provide the token. Okay, so let's get the token. Now token is this token is actually used to send because you can see here I'm trying to directly send now if I go to my clients so they can actually uh, these are the clients and then we have users and this is the applications right so what I'm going to do is just use this token here and uh, let's go to the URL here and yeah, I just pasted it and uh, what we're going to do now is just use uh, something called a websocket.connect event so web async since it's a asynchronous event so websocket web socket and uh, sockets.connect and then you need to pass the URI so this is the connection uh, string and here you provide the alias that you want to use for it, so WebSocket. Now, we're going to make a infinite loop here. So, now what we're going to do is basically listen, or you know, wait for the message to come. So we're going to use the WebSocket.recv. So recv method will wait, since we are using await, it will wait for the message to receive and once you get the message we're going to print for now and uh, uh, after that i will show you how you can send a notification as well so i'm going to just provide slash and slash in and then i'm just going to provide the data here so yeah all right so once this thing is done okay this is the piece of code now in order to run it you need to get first of all the event loop so async io dot get event loop and then run until complete now it will since it's an infinite loop so it will run forever and uh, here you need to specify the s method which is client in our case perfect okay now I'm going to try to run it and see if it works so if I do Python 3 and we're going to run the client by so we're getting an error it says name URI is not defined okay I actually messed up it should be URI here so so connect URL okay let's run it again okay so now we're getting an error it says server rejected the WebSocket connection and we're getting 401 okay the problem here is the token so token okay the token needs to be the token of client so this is the client token I'm going to copy the client token and uh, now I'm going to paste it here so over here we're going to change the token all right once this thing is done let's just save it okay and let's run it so now if I'm going to run it now you can see it is waiting right it's an infinite loop so it is waiting now let's try to send uh, an event okay so I'm going to send an event from here so 
now you can see we are receiving the message this is from the web, uh, web browser itself and if you see over here the message is being logged right so if you see uh, the response that you're getting uh, you will see that we have ID and app ID and other things so in the message title and the priority and the date string as well in the same way we're getting the data over here so this is nice right now this is fine this is how we can handle the events right now let's see how can we actually display these events right and uh, then I will also show you a practical example or a practical way uh, to use it so but first of all let's try to display the notifications from this uh, client itself as well so how we will do it we're going to use a command called notify send so if you are familiar with this like notify send if you do this you will get this notification here now this hello world indicates the title and then this is the message right so this is what we're going to use so in order to execute this command so I might use the library called sys so you can also use here something called uh, the p open uh, thing but uh, yeah you can also use the sub process to do this but just to make things easier I'm going to use this then I'm going to use sys uh, oh actually it is os then we're going to use os.system and I'm now going to run the command right so the command is simple we're going to say notify dash send and let's make it f string so that it can be easier for us to directly run the command then they want us to provide a ma uh, title right so here we're going to provide the title and that is going to come from our data itself so what I'm going to do is like say here data and inside the data we'll find something called uh, the title right so I can just provide something like this and after this uh, we want to provide the message here, right so I'm going to provide the message by saying here data and inside it you will find message here as well okay so once you get this you can run this command and this should essentially uh, give you the notification as well let's try it out I'm going to close it run it again and let's send the event again this time I'm just going to fill, uh, make things easier by parsing the content into JQ so that the return content value can be parsed perfect but we are getting one error it says indices must be integer okay so we're getting one error here and the problem is the type error string indices must be integer okay wait a second I think first of all the syntax highlighting here is like really stupid but I guess we can just fix this issue uh, by wait a second so what I'm gonna do is like use the triple coded string here because the syntax highlighting is like super stupid in Vim right now so over here I'm going to change this to this and uh, then I'm going to use triple coated strings and oh, in the beginning as well I'm going to use triple coated string okay let's try this out now now you can see it is running and now if I try to send an event okay we're still getting an error this say uh, string indices must be integer uh, wait a second let me just fix it the syntax highlighting is here is like seriously stupid let me just open it in my vs code all right so this is the client and uh, let's open in full screen and increase the font size for you guys okay so over here this is fine this is fine uh, okay Ah, oh, okay I get the problem the data is actually not string so sorry data is actually string it's not JSON so I need to parse it and convert it into JSON first so what I'm going to just like data is equals to JSON dot parse do we have method parse I think it's JSON dot loads in Python 
So we can pass the data again and I can just import JSON module. Okay, so let's try this out and let's run it. So Python 3 and client, if we try to send an event, now you can see our message is actually displayed here as well, right? So what I'm going to do is, let me just show you one more thing. So even if you do not open the website, so we have this issue in Linux or maybe even Windows, I don't know. But if you close the uh, website, which is being sending the push notification, and if you try to run the same thing again, so basically if I try to send now, I should not be able to get the notification from the browser. So this is the notification from uh, the Python itself. So this is from our client. Now we can do one more thing to make it cool, which is play a music, right? So whenever you get a notification, I want to play a little music as well. So if I go to my bin directory, you will see that I have something called alert.vab, right? And this is essentially a, a web file which contains some audio. So you can do something like web play and then ampersand to run it in the background and then a colon and then run the command. Right? So we are going to integrate this really, really weird sound. What I'm going to do is like copy this so alert web and I'm going to put it in the YouTube and the Gotify directory. Okay? So once this thing is done, what I'm going to do is you have this web file here. So we're going to use the exact same command. So we're going to say p play like this and then dot slash alert dot web and then an ampersand and then semicolon and then we're running this command perfect let's try it out one more time so um, what we're going to do is open this run it again and now if I try to send an event okay so we are getting one error which is like sh and unexpected semicolon so this uh, is not working let me see if I send it again okay you can see it is working really <laughs> well okay so this is the kind of thing that we are getting I can also send the notification using my phone but let me show you one cool thing that you can do so i'm going to lock it log into my virtual machine so over here i'm going to create an alias um, so basically i will create a, i will open my vimrc file here not vimrc bash rc so we'll do bash rc so this is the bash rc we'll go all the way to the end and then we're going to say alias and we're going to say uh send uh, send notification is equals to and here i'm basically going to provide the command that i want to run right so let me just take that command for a moment so over here all right so this is essentially the command i will change some of the content okay like this perfect so what I'm going to do is paste it here <laughs> and uh, one more thing that we need to do is to remove this and use the singular brackets and we don't need this here like this perfect everything is fine so we'll say here we're going to provide the this is the title so I'm going to say um, first of all a emoji so can I pick server or something globe yep so we're going to say website deployed okay so this is going to give me this information website deployed and the message is going to be uh, saying that your website is deployed hello there and let's use a web web emoji 
and we'll say hello there slash n your website is live now check it out okay so this is like <laughs> uh, I've just created this command here so now I can source my bash RC file so I can do something like bash RC once it is done I can do send notification and you will see this okay now let's see how can I make it uh, so how can I use or how can I integrate github action with it right let's take a look so what I'm going to do is go back here and if you guys are following me you must know that I run a blog and uh, it's a PWS so you can install it as well so here so it uh, it uses github actions to create a ci cd pipeline so if you go to the deploy yaml you will find that we are doing yarn generate so once this yarn generate is done i want to be able to send uh this uh, command let's do it so what i'm going to do is like uh change this file so the whole idea is super simple uh, so we don't need the access to server now i can close it and uh, now I'm going to say go to code go to the block once you are here let me see there are some changes oh I must be doing something so uh, anyways if I s if I go if I open my dot github slash workflow and then deploy ml <laughs> now i'm just going to run this command here as well okay so once this thing is done now if i try to add this thing and if i do git push origin sorry git commit dash m say added gotify notification and then if i do git push origin master so this is going to create a github action which in turn will start deploying my website so you can see once it is done i should be able to see it once i refresh it you can see added gotify notification and once this job is completed once my website is deployed of uh, using the github actions i should be getting a nice notification saying that your website is deployed let's see So it can take up a while it wouldn't take like really long time so we are expecting that sound in some time okay and one two three okay <laughs> we have some errors here wait a second send notification command not found so it is not able to identify the command send notification but how can I so the problem is it is not able to identify the command called send notification and we have a new video from box writer anyways so let's try to fix it why it is not uh, working so this github action tries to run a github uh, a container and it basically tried to SSH into our machine and uh, it's not working okay so let's do one more thing here what I'm gonna do is like do alias and then send notification notification and what I'm gonna do is like copy this whole command uh, like this 
and uh, then I'm going to let me just copy it once again then I'm going to uh, go and create a file in my bin directory so user bin so we have all the bin directories here so I'm going to say vim and say send notification and that's it and then I'm going to paste the command so this is fine but I don't want to okay I can't open it because I need to use sudo here and now if I paste it I don't need this because it is not going to be an alias now uh, we want to be able to execute this command so I can remove this whole thing and go here and remove this whole thing so and now once I can exit here I need to make it executable so chmod plus x dot slash send notification so we're getting an error because I need to use sudo now if I do send notification here perfect so this thing is actually working the sound is annoying but anyways now this thing is working so let's try it out one more time what I'm gonna do is like uh, we don't have anything can I push like empty changes it will not work obviously so I'm gonna do what I'm going to do is um, open my readme here and say go all the way down and say notifier and say uses gotify to send notification perfect so now I can do git add period git commit dash m in readme oh I misspelled it anyways now if I do git push origin master okay so this should now start a job which in turn should deploy our website and should run that command that we want so let me uh, let's see if we go to actions again we should have one action here and it's going to take up a while again so let me just uh, give you a quick explanation about okay it's working so you guys can see that it is working now you might think that I'm trying to run the client right so how can I make it persistent right even if I close the terminal it should work so there are multiple ways the easiest one can be to directly run it in a tmux session and uh, do something like python and client pi and just to detach it okay now even if I close the terminal and if I if I will push the changes again I should be able to see it okay let me just give you a quick demonstration so if, if I just put my URL here like gotify.devcorn.com and if I do git add period git commit dash m added gotify URL in readme and then if I do git push origin master it should now you can see that our terminal is not running right I can also close this and also over here I can close this terminal as well so I don't have any application running you can see this is the only uh, thing I can also close my browser as well to show you so now you can see nothing is actually running right you can see there is no program which is running and let's see if we can get any notification in a while so yeah this was a quick little script perfect so this is how you can integrate gotify with your uh, github actions or anything in general so this was a brief idea about how to use gotify if you need more videos on gotify leave a comment and i will make videos so yeah this is it for this video bye